All right, that's good, good, good. Welcome everyone, Carefree Cooks, we're together again. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about whether, uh, it, you know, it's holiday potluck time. Are you the person that's gonna bring the standout dish? Or are you the person that's gonna bring the napkins? <laughs> so that's what we need to talk about today on Tuesday Talk Live. Of course, it's Tuesday, it's noon, <laughs> I'm talking and we're live, but if uh, you are not watching this on a Tuesday, no, I don't mean if you're not watching this. I mean, if you're watching it and it's not a Tuesday, uh, then we're not live. And you should go to webcookingclasses.com slash live and register for my alert system because we're together again. We're all carefree cooks. Let's sing it together, boys and girls. I, <laughs> I create my own recipes and that brings friends and family together. I learn every time I cook. I define my own cooking style. I practice pro methods and I love my cooking. And that makes me a carefree cook. If you've missed any of the past Tuesday Talk Lives, you can go to Pinterest or Instagram and look for Chef Todd Moore there. They're all being cataloged for you. So welcome everyone and welcome all our new carefree cooks. Over the past few weeks, we've welcomed tons of people. Thank you. Thank you for joining our movement of cooking with methods, not written instructions and it makes everybody so much happier. What? The sweatshirt, you ask? <laughs> the hoodie sweatshirt? Well, yes, the care the web cooking classes store is open uh, right now for all those goodies that you asked me about. I get uh, emails, where do you get the shirt? Well, you get it in the web cooking classes store. So it's the holiday time, everybody. I'm so excited. The holidays are coming. It's a great time for cooking. And of course, Santa is near. I've got him on the radar. Santa is coming. He is bringing gifts to all the great carefree cooks everywhere because everybody knows that Santa is actually a good cook himself. Well, Let's be fair. He he can cook one thing, gingerbread. All right, that that's that's all Santa knows how to make, but he makes really good gingerbread. But you know what Santa is going to say if you're still following recipes, if you have not become a carefree cook, set yourself free with the dependable methods that can be applied to any ingredient, well, you might wind up with spam in your stockings this year or maybe even worse spam stockings <laughs> that 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 would be a terrible present from santa no 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 we don't want santa to be upset with us we don't want carefree claws to be mad but the way that you can show santa that you really care about being a truly carefree cook this year is to display it at the holiday potluck dinner that you're gonna be invited to. You know, you know you're gonna be invited to a holiday potluck dinner, right? And uh, you know you're gonna roll your eyes at it. Everybody does. It's the church, it's the office, it's your social group, it's your knitting circle, your book club. They're all gonna to wanna to have potlucks. And I'll tell you what, it's a nightmare for a chef. For somebody like me, who owned a catering company for almost a decade, the potluck is the worst. It's the sloppy plating, right? It's the totally unidentifiable items. What is this? It looks like somebody was walking by the buffet table and flung it, <laughs> you know, at the table when they went by. How come people don't want to take credit for the things that they leave on the potluck? It's anonymous. And plus, you got the tuna salad, next to the chocolate cherry squares. And, and then you're putting them on the same plate, the chocolate and salmon, <laughs> you know? It's, it's a caterer's nightmare and it's the worst time of year. When I get invited to potlucks, I try not to be snotty, right? I try and say, oh, thank you for the invitation, but I am cutting a glance at that buffet table because I know a potluck is not the way that I would do it. It's a mess. But there's a way that your dish can stand out on the potluck this year because I have done these for decades and decades now and there are some things that are just tried and true. Now, I'm not talking about 
cooking lessons or, or what you're going to bring to the potluck. That was last week. If you go to Tuesday Talk Live from last week, we talked about the five categories of appetizers. That's where you get your ideas and inspirations from that. Today, I'm going to talk about that little extra nudge, just that little thing that sets you apart on that buffet, on that mixed up buffet table. And... Uh, it starts like this. It is my potluck success tips. Now, the first thing to remember when, when you're getting involved in a potluck is that your dish is going to get cold. This is the big difference between like a plate up or a full hot buffet where you have chafing dishes. Unless, <laughs> uh, just had a mental picture, unless you show up at someone else's potluck with a full caterer's set of gold and chrome roll top chafing dishes and take over 90% of the table, your food is gonna get cold. So you need to remember this, your food's gonna dry out also. Anything you bring to a potluck is going to start to degrade imme immediately. It's like buying a new car. As soon as you drive it off the lot, it starts to depreciate. As soon as you deposit your potluck dish on that horrible buffet, all that mixed up, non-identified stuff, it's going to start to depreciate. It gets cold. It dries out. And it's going to be portioned recklessly. If you put a whole pie or, or like a whole casserole out there, people are going to hack at it like psycho with a spoon. And you'll come back 10 minutes later, that beautiful dish that I left on the buffet table a minute ago looks like somebody stirred it, dropped it on the floor, and then put it back on the buffet. It's terrible. You need to think about preparing dishes that look and taste just as good warm as cold. So don't depend on, you know, a, a white sauce that when it gets cold thickens up and gets gelatinous. Don't depend on a hollandaise to bring to a potluck because you know it's going to break. So think about something that's going to sit out on a table for an extended period of time. Consider pre-portioning your dish also. Pies certainly should be cut in pieces. And pies should be cut in half the size that you normally would because people are going to take three or four or five pieces of pie on a potluck. Don't let them take one-eighth of your entire pie. Let them take one-sixteenth of your entire pie. Even casseroles can be, be pre-portioned. I've even seen some preparations where things are put in little cups, like little shot glasses, a little bit of cocktail sauce and a shrimp standing up in a, in a shot glass. That's portioning. That helps your, your dish go a little further than the guy that comes and loads up on 10 shrimp, right? Uh, if you can bring a chafing dish uh, or a crock pot or something like that to keep your items warm, there are also things like a slate or a piece of marble. If you bring a thick slate or piece of marble or some kind of brick, ask your host if you can just heat it up in the oven for a little bit, set it on the buffet, and then your dish on top of that. Again, <laughs> depending on who this host is, they might think you're trying to take over. Um, and they've accused me <laughs> of, of that in the past, but it will keep your dish warm. So think about ways to keep your dish warm and moist and portioned correctly. The next thing is your dish is going to travel, right? Unless you live next door or the party is at your house, your dish is going to take some miles. So don't prepare dishes with loose sauces, things that can spill, things that are going to slosh around and look different. Uh, don't prepare items that are going to get soggy. Uh, you can't do fried items, deep fried items, toasted items, even pastries. Like if you want to bring something warm, uh, like in web cooking classes, when I teach you how to do the crab a dip in the a little puff pastry cups, the, the pat a shoe lesson, I think it's lesson week 32, somewhere in there. Anyway, those are nice when you prepare them at home, but any kind of uh, croissants or baked goods with something hot in it is going to get really soggy. So no fried items, no toasted items that are going to get soggy. And consider maybe par cooking the item and finishing the dish on site. Again, if you don't know the host of this party at all, <laughs> don't try this. But if you are, you can arrive and say, look, I've, I've cooked the bread, you know, 90% of the way or the hors d'oeuvres are browned off. Can I just warm them in your oven? Or can I finish my casserole? Can I just broil the top to melt the cheese right before service? That type of thing. Par cooking and finishing on site. 
The third, remember, you are never going to see that stuff again, okay? You're never going to see that spoon. You're never going to see that casserole dish. And to be honest with you, I kind of think it's bad form to call the host the next day and be like, hey, can I pick up my dish? And by the way, did you wash it for me? <laughs> you know? So what you really need to do is go to the party supply store, get disposable items, get get leave behind items, but get something that, that's unique, that looks like you put some thought into it, or you're going to be tracking that serving bowl down forever. And then, it, you know, it's like luggage at the airport. Somebody else picked up your casserole dish because they all look the same. So invest in a little bit at the supply store so you don't have to worry about it. You can just leave it behind. And that way you can get the Christmas platter or the turkey platter or the red platter that complements your dish and you won't ever have to worry about it. One of my best tips that nobody follows is bring signage. Everybody has a computer, right? I, you wouldn't be watching if you don't have a computer right now. You wouldn't be part of Tuesday Talk Live. And if you have a printer, print a sign and, and you know, make it colorful. Um, I used to take a, a three inch wide by 11 inch tall. So imagine taking an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, basically cutting it in half the tall way and then printing on the bottom half of that paper and then folding that in half, it will make a tent. So think about bringing signage because signage builds expectation. Why do you think menus at restaurants use so many adjectives? Slowly cooked in a savory, delicate broth that was rendered slowly, right? It builds your expectation, the description of the menu. If you have a sign next to your dish that tells what went into it, people go, oh my goodness, I love whatever, whatever it is, you know, chicken. I thought it was tofu, but I love chicken. So it builds expectation. It also alerts people to food allergies. There are a lot of food allergies these days, and it would be kind of you to tell people, or maybe you've prepared something for a specific diet. This is a gluten-free cauliflower crust mini pizza. You want to tell people that so that they can enjoy it as well. Signage can also spell out your creativity. This might look like your average apple pie, but trust me, it's not, you know? And you can describe there, it is Diane's grandma's heritage, 1860s apple pie on a sign. Wouldn't you want to eat grandma's heritage, 1860s apple pie way more than the one I just whipped up this afternoon, right? It sells it for you. It sets you out. And lastly, presentation, presentation, presentation. Like in real estate, location, location, everything should be about the presentation. Do the small things because again, a potluck table can be a really, really messy place. And I, you know, I don't want to sound like it's a competition because cooking is not a competition. Cooking is an expression of your art. But if your art is better than somebody else's, <laughs> Why not show that off, you know? <laughs> and don't, you know, you put your dish next to maybe somebody, let's say that they went out and bought it, okay? You don't want to put your dish next to a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. So there are things that you can do. These mismatching bowls, these uncoordinated colors, again, the cream spinach right next to the chocolate cherry pie, it's tough. So try and add visual appeal to your dish. Put it on a colored napkin or bring napkins specifically for your dish. If it's a crab dish and you can find napkins that have a cute crab on it, a charger underneath your platter. In other words, a, a smaller, I've even seen people uh, bring Christmas wrap, packaging wrap, uh, uh, wrap a, a round piece of cardboard and set it down as an underplate, a charger for your meal that sets your meal apart. It gives it a little bit more presentation. And lastly, the correct garnish. You can really set your meal apart with, with beautiful little sprigs of dill like I saw someone do in our Carefree Cooks community today. Uh, you can have different colored spoons or bring the chopsticks if your dish is Asian or do something along with that theme that also goes with the garnish because the garnish always alerts a diner to what is in your dish. And that's how 
you add these complementing items, these things that communicate what's in your dish, the things that communicate why it's special, the things that help contrast the colors, the textures of it, the things that are just as simple as a sign that explains what's in your dish. And if you do those, those few things, and again, no judgment on what it is you cooked, that was last week, but how you present it at this potluck is more giving of yourself. Again, I'm being silly that it's a competition because it really shouldn't be. I believe in all inclusion in, in cooking, but you know you have your pride on the line. We wouldn't be human if you didn't want to be most proud that your dish was the one that everybody complimented. Yours was the one that was gone, you know, in, in like 10 minutes. You'd want to have that sense of pride. And these are small ways that you can do it. And it's actually a lot of fun. So take some of those tips for you. And if you're going to these holiday potluck dishes, make sure that you follow some of those tips. And you can watch this video again and again. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the... Uh, the thumbs up that I got here. Uh, there's a lot going on in our Carefree Cooks community this week as well. And I wanted to give a special congratulations to Norma. I love this post. Norma joined our Carefree Cooks community. She became a lifetime member of web cooking classes on uh, with Tuesday on Friday, I think it was. And then the, the day later, the very first lesson, Norma posted in our Carefree Cooks community, my first dish. I took the first two lessons of web cooking classes. I took action on it. I did what Chef Todd said as she wrote, it's not elegant, it's not perfect, and it's not bad. I, I loved that. My first dish, not elegant, not perfect, not bad. So she did an e Indonesian chicken thing. It's not that we have a recipe for Indonesian chicken in web cooking classes. It's the same method everybody uses, but she used uh, the, the flavor she desired, some chili, some ginger, some garlic. She said, I threw in some coconut and peanut butter. So coconut, peanut, chili, ginger, garlic, Come on, that's got to be better than not bad, Norma. Good for you. Congratulations. Getting involved in web cooking classes and getting involved right away. Eloisa's blowing me up with the heart eyes. <laughs> I just saw that. Hey, a lot of baking going on in our Carefree Cooks community. It's the holiday time. Baking is, is big now, right? This is another a part of giving of yourself. Baking a pie, baking a cake, baking breads for somebody. And Melody's all over it, man. Melody made a German chocolate cake and took a picture of her German chocolate cake. And of course, she gets all the hearts like I'm getting now. Everybody's hearting me. And, and you know, the support of our community. And then in a short period later, oh, look what happened to Melody's cake. But thank you, Melody. Melody was brave enough to post a fail. And I don't believe there are fails. There, there's a new opportunity to learn how to do it, you know? So, but she said fail, epic fail, she said. And my cake like collapsed. But our Carefree Cooks community comes to her rescue. There's a whole line of comments about, well, this might be the case, that might be the case, this might be the case. Most often, though, when a cake sinks like that, it's a structure problem. It, it's a protein of the egg and, and uh, starch content of the flour. And I happen to notice, uh, 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 Melody, that you posted that there was something about uh, whipping an egg white to stiff peaks and substituting for one of the eggs. That's most probably the culprit. You took out some fat with that egg yolk, and if you really don't whip those egg whites to stiff peaks, or if you knock them at all, or if you whip them to stiff peaks and then you mix them with the rest of the batter, you can deflate them entirely, and that's what ruins the whole thing. But boy, Melody, thank you so much, because from that, that's a pretty much perfect German chocolate cake to like leave, go in the other room and come back and see that. Oh, you must have been horrified, but we're here to help you and throughout the season. What else is going on? Uh, uh, Van is doing these thumbprint cookies, very cool. Van got a little art noir with us with his black and white photo, but that's good. This is another great thing. These thumbprint cookies, they can be peanut butter cookies. They can be shortbread cookies. Uh, they can be chocolate cookies. They can be anything that you want. They're a great thing to make at the holidays. Nice job, Van. I really like those. Uh, Marilyn's doing gingerbread men. That's really cool. Time of year to do gingerbread men. I 
Oh my God, there was a year, uh, I was a chef at the National Security Agency and we had to make something like 300 gingerbread houses. I don't remember, maybe maybe Heather does, but we had to make hundreds of gingerbread houses and that was uh, almost two, it was two decades ago. And I think I still, <laughs> I still tweak a little bit when I see gingerbread men. Nicely done, done though, uh, Marilyn. Lauren, uh, Marilyn's also doing uh, an almond butter crunch. A lot of candies going on. Did I miss one? Oh, there it is. Lauren's, I, I like this. I wanted to get to this. Lauren said she's making gingerbread yogis with their chakras. So she piped five little chakras. So they don't have to be gingerbread men. They can be gingerbread yogis as well. Uh, Marilyn's almond butter crunch looks incredible. Rosie made these ooey, gooey, chewy brownies. There's a lot of baking going on. Michael who has been on a life's quest to understand sourdough, <laughs> I think, and has pretty much mastered it uh, because he's making great sourdough breads. Now he's making biscuits. Like, do, do you see how carefree cooking thought process goes? Like, all right, I figured this out. What else can I apply it to? You know, all of a sudden you have these aha moments. Okay, now that I know this, that I'm comfortable with it, where can I put this? I can put it in my biscuits or maybe I can do a, a sourdough shepherd's pie or maybe I can, you know, and you just start rolling with it. And that's what I love about watching the progression of people becoming carefree cooks because I, I see these aha moments. I see these realizations as well. Um, Carol is also doing biscuits, but what I loved about her story is that she's doing them with her three-year-old grandson. And is there any better place to connect with your grandkids? You know, they're, they're on their devices, they're on their phones. Even at three years old, I'm sure, Carol, your grandson has a device. One of the few things I find that can distract them that's a real-world, problem-solving, tangible, touchable thing is bringing them into the kitchen. So good for you, Carol, for, for baking with your three-year-old grandson. They will never forget the time that they spend with grandma in the kitchen. But look, it, it's not all about baking, even though Don, <laughs> Don made a bread pudding, which is great, love bread, bread pudding, but you had me at vanilla bourbon glaze. Ooh bread pudding with a vanilla bourbon glaze. That just, that's like sings a Christmas carol to me. Nicely done, Don. But look, it's not all about sweets and baking, right? Len, this fascinated me. Len is getting ready for the winter. Len's been drying herbs all summer long, jarring them, categorizing them. He's going to have a nice winter of cooking. Those go great in, in stews, in pickling things, in fermenting things. All those herbs will go nicely. So it's not all about sweet things and baking. Uh, Michael does an apple butternut squash casserole, which looks really simple to me. Uh, butternut squash, apples. I don't know if there's onions in there or not, but you put it in the oven and that's, man... That's naturally sweet. Like you don't have to add any sugar to that or anything. And uh, Diane is making a Christmas tree out of fruit. You know, people always ask me like, you know, knife skills. Do I really need knife skills? I mean, can't, can't I skip that part? <laughs> no, it's the first thing we teach in culinary school. And you can see the art that can come out when you have really nice knife skills. Uh, Diane is doing Christmas tree with all kinds of cut up fruit. What a beautiful gift to give to someone because you have the skills to use your knife, use your paring knife. Uh, Jason, is uh, he says, so, so many of our carefree cooks are so modest. It's incredible. He says, this is simply a bowl of traditional Cajun New Year's, black-eyed peas, smoked sausage, onions, garlic, and Cajun se seasonings. It's just simply a bowl of incredibleness. You know, this is what you forget when you're a carefree cook because you're a carefree cook in your region. And although we all practice the basic, repeatable, reliable methods of cooking, we all add different ingredients to it. So this, Jason, this might be simple and very nonchalant to you. It's mind blowing to me. And to somebody in the Pacific Northwest, Cajun smoked sausage, what? You know, to someone in the Northeast to, to look at Southwestern cuisine. Heck, we have all our friends in Australia. We have had more carefree cooks crowned in Australia recently than anywhere. So hello to all my friends down under. Their cooking is different than ours. We have friends in the UK, in Scotland, in France. This is what combines us. This is what binds 
everybody is that we all cook the same way, but we use different ingredients each time. And how could you not like that? If you like it, you like this video, like it, share it, send it to somebody else because there's so much that we can do in food to bring our friends and families together. And it really just makes it so much fun. Uh, let's see, what's everybody talking at me today? Uh, uh, of Don found a salted caramel whiskey. Don, we'll have to have a whiskey conversation someday because since I got back from Scotland, my goodness, I'm all about it. Uh, Jerry's telling us gingerbread men upside down can be reindeer. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, I get it. I get what you're saying. And, you know, when the dough is soft, I mean, you can you can mold them into anything you want. You, you can give it like a long Pinocchio nose if you want, things like that. Um, uh, Kim does her cakes in casserole dishes. That's cool. Uh, I'm just looking at all the comments now. <laughs> Carol says there's a sign at her fish counter. Carol's in the UK, I know. And it says, uh, <laughs> warning, uh, it may contain fish. The fish counter contains fish. Yeah, that's good. Uh, setting people out. That's good. Uh, uh, mini chalkboards. Judy's telling us that mini chalkboards are a really good idea for a buffet. That's really good. Contains nuts is important. Gluten-free. Jesse is with us. That's so good. I'm seeing that. Merry Christmas to everyone that is wishing me Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. Uh, people from everywhere are with us. I don't see any questions necessarily. So if I do, I'll go back to the video. I'll make sure that I answer any questions that are in there, but I don't see anything immediately impressing. So what I was trying to tell you was if you like it, go ahead and share it. <laughs> give me a like, give me a thumbs up, give me a heart, send it to a friend of yours that is going to be doing a potluck uh, event this year because they want to make their dish stand out even more so. And if you're looking for a fully stress-free way to have holiday cooking success, I'm still holding holiday holiday cooking success classes because the holidays aren't over yet. So go to webcookingclasses.com slash turkey and register for my next free holiday cooking success class and make this the best, most stress-free holiday season this year where you're actually part of the event and not just the caterer. So thanks for being with me, everyone, for another Tuesday Talk Live. This is Chef Todd Moore reminding you uh, that there's a method to your holiday cooking success, and we'll talk again soon. Oh, I, uh, you might want to stick around. Uh, I think we're going to be cooking tomorrow, so stay tuned.